Not a bad evening on the way as we get ready to close this Monday on a very pleasant note. Clear skies take over, low temperatures falling into the mid to upper 40s, a nice light breeze to go along with it. In short, really nothing wrong with the overnight outlook. And even as we go into your day on Tuesday, much of the region is looking pretty good. Upper 70s, some low 80s for highs in a majority of our uh, viewing area. But toward the west, and especially in the southwestern corner of South Dakota, maybe an isolated shower or two. But there are chances for rain on the way sooner rather than later. More on that coming up. And until then, first at four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. We talk with an inspector about deck safety after a deck collapse this weekend, injuring several people. Plus, it's a special day for a local student as she becomes the first person to receive the Annie Lanning All the Words Scholarship. And later this week is all about donating blood to save a life as Cumberland kicks off the Flying for Life Blood Drive. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First of Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. First responders were called to a deck collapse on the west side of Sioux Falls over the weekend. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt. This accident has a lot of people looking over their own decks. Wooden decks can start showing signs of decay in 10 to 15 years. Butch Warrington, the chief building official with the city of Sioux Falls, says that the decking next to the house and the handrails are often the first parts of a deck to go. A lot of the old lumber for the decking was uh, a five-quarter board, so that'll start getting a little spongier after a little time. That's why we see a lot more composite decking now, because it will last longer. Coming up tonight at 5, we're going to talk with a man who specializes in building decks uh, about a checklist that he uses when deciding if a deck needs to be repaired or replaced. Two people died Saturday evening after two vehicles collided east of Plankinton. The highway patrol says a car collided head-on with a semi along I-90. The 17-year-old driver of the car and a 29-year-old passenger died at the scene. Troopers say both were not wearing their seatbelts. The 63-year-old driver of the semi-truck was not injured. South Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating the crash. An 18-year-old is dead after a car hit a house in Rock Valley, Iowa. Police responded to the crash at the intersection of Fairway Drive and Golf Course Road early Sunday morning. Police say the car hit a tree and a house. Walter Lee Winnia died at the scene. Another passenger had minor injuries. The crash is still under investigation. Well, after kind of a soggy weekend, I guess you could say, uh, we have some sunshine out there today. Yeah, I went for two small walks today. Yeah, it's nice out there, Adam. It really is very nice outside. Went for a jog this afternoon and really could not complain. Plenty of sunshine, a light breeze. In short, this is about as close to perfect for mid-May weather as you could possibly get. And it may even get better tomorrow, if that can even uh, be a thing. Outside we go as we kick things off with our downtown camera. 70 with a variable breeze at 5 miles per hour. And we'll go to head on over, rather, to Beetle County, our new camera in Huron. 73 with a view to the south. A nice light and variable breeze at just 3 miles per hour. Beautiful blue skies above. High pressure uh, very much in control across really the entirety of the region. 71 at the capital, 70 Phillips, 68 Faith and Rapid City, 60 toward Custer, 67 as you head into Pine Ridge, but a 70 is the further north of East Chicago, 76 in Mulbridge, for example, 78 Aberdeen, 79 Sisseton, 73 in Ortonville, even 70 as you head toward Marshall. Not much of a breeze to speak of. It's been very light, around 5 to 10 miles per hour, and truly it has been variable in direction over the course of the morning and the afternoon. So there is high pressure holding serve for a little, little while longer. Uh, we have seen some stubborn cloud cover toward a Yankton, Vermilion, uh, southern parts of Lincoln County, but at least it's been dry. The rain has only gotten about as close as Omaha and areas just to the west of Des Moines, and that's really been just about all she wrote for the day today. Tomorrow, like I said, could arguably be better. We're warmer and we're still mostly sunny. Temperatures in the upper 70s to near 80 in southeastern and northeastern Kelowind. But there is going to be one small exception that will be out to the west, where in the southwestern corners, specifically, 
and a little more cloud cover, maybe an isolated shower or two. Rapid City points south into Hot Springs, Custer, and then into Oglala, Lakota County as well. But better chances for rain are on the way as we head into the midweek outlook. We'll talk about that and your full seven-day forecast as we head through the hour. Okay, thanks a lot, Adam. There are less than two weeks until Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that the nation will run out of money to pay its bills. Congressional leaders will meet tomorrow with President Biden to try and work out a deal on raising the debt ceiling. Kelloland News Washington, D.C. correspondent Rashad Hudson has the latest. I remain optimistic because I'm a congenital optimist. As the debt limit deadline inches closer, President Biden says he's still hopeful about reaching a deal with House Republicans. I really think there's a desire on their part as well as ours to reach agreement. After postponing a meeting Friday, the president is expected to meet again with congressional leaders later this week. The Treasury Department says a default could happen as early as June 1st and would trigger an economic crisis. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be paying the American people's bills day by day. A default would be the first in the nation's history. Texas Republican Michael McCall says playing with the country's finances is a dangerous game. I think uh, defaulting on our full faith and credit, uh, any financial person would tell you that's very uh, catastrophic. Florida Republican Byron Donald says Republicans already passed their plan. He says President Biden is the one dragging his feet leading our nation into default, and it's a very sad thing to see. Republicans say a debt limit must include spending cuts, but Connecticut Democrat Chris Murphy has another idea. If we want to get serious about deficit reduction, then you have to put tax increases for billionaires and corporations on the table. That was Rashad Hudson reporting. The White House is holding strong that they want a clean debt ceiling raise that does not include any spending cuts. Discussions regarding the debt ceiling in Congress could delay the next farm bill. This is important to farmers, especially when it comes to planning for next year's crop. The farm bill is used with a set of numbers to set prices in the federal crop insurance program. So right now, if we don't get a farm bill on time, it, it, puts, it creates a lot of uncertainty for us as farmers because we rely on the farm bill for our crop insurance and, and different programs that we work with. It. Also, a big priority is adding funds to promote U.S. crop sales to other countries. Economist Chad Hart at Iowa State has been monitoring the farm bill as it comes together. There has been a lot of discussions about how to handle this as we deal with the, the, the problems within the you know, raising the debt ceiling. And so I think you will see both the House and Senate Agriculture Committees look to sort of gain some guidance as to how to proceed to make sure that our farm bill programs continue despite what happens with the debt ceiling. Well, the Hart said another big part of the farm bill is the SNAP benefit programs, which gets food to those who need it. After the break, 